Thanks for joining us again and welcome to the Forex Trading Asia Daily Currency Call. The date is the 19th of August 2021 and it is episode 359. Now, if it is your first time here, a big welcome. So we do this currency call every Monday to Friday and the currencies we analyze as uh, are as follows. We've got the Aussie and Kiwi on Monday. We've got the Euro pairs Tuesday, Wednesday pound pairs Thursday, we've got yen pairs and gold. And then Friday, we've got CAD and cryptocurrencies. So this is the currency call where you'll get market economic updates, we'll get key support and resistance levels, trade ideas and more. This currency call is going to be very beneficial to the long term investors and also short term traders. And here we'll be going through uh, what could move prices, possible trade ideas, and we'll also highlight potential targets and risks. Now, a disclaimer as well, it's important during this session to understand it is not intended to be trade recommendations. It is solely the opinion and views of the speaker. So please remember to do your own analysis before entering any trade. So guys, we did have the FOMC meeting minutes out uh, very early this morning, uh, 2 a.m. Singapore time. And we've got Gim Hong here, our head of analysis at LCMS Traders to go through uh, what happened. So Gim, uh, all yours. And we enjoy your analysis now. All right. Thank you, Scott. Okay. Actually, you know what? Before I actually dive into the um, FOMC, okay, there's something I wanted to add on for the um, what I've shared on Reserve Bank of New Zealand's monetary policy meeting yesterday. Okay. So let's just dive straight into the quarterly report. Okay. So, um, yeah, you know, besides um, holding the interest rate unchanged, you know, due to the... Um, newly discovered COVID uh, case, okay? And the recently, uh, yesterday imposed the, um, what's that again? Lockdown, nationwide level for lockdown. Um, the central bank also released the quarterly report, okay? Whereby they actually cover their um, projection, okay? Projection materials. So if you guys can remember um, back in, when was it again? I think it was back in May, okay? During the May's meeting, um, the RBNZ actually projected um, rate hike, okay? In September, 2022, okay? Now, however, this time around, during that quarterly report, okay? Guess what happens? 2021 December, they are actually expecting a rate hike in December. December this year, okay? So they actually carried forward their um, expectation of um, an interest rate hike, you know, way earlier than what was predicted three months ago, okay? So yes, you know, um, the market has been expecting um, a rate hike um, yesterday, okay? But then because, you know, due to the unforeseen circumstances caused by COVID, you know, they decided to put on hold this whole thing. But um, to be honest, personally, I feel like, you know, this is not going to, this is not going to be, um, I would say, um, what's that term again? This is not going to put the New Zealand's economy on hold. Okay? It is not going to be a, a big turn of events, okay? Why is that the case? You know, as we have seen how the New Zealand has been very effective in terms of containing the whole pandemic in the, um, like since last year, okay? This time around, Personally, I believe they will be doing a good job as well, okay? And they will actually contain it in a short amount, in a short amount of time, okay? So, you know, from now until the next meeting in September, you know, it's probably more than enough for them to actually do the whole containment, right? So from then on, you know, we may actually be hearing more good news from the central bank, all right? Especially with these, with the, you know, carried forward expectation of the um, hike in interest rate in December, Okay, so that's all I have to cover for um, the monetary policy announcement from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Okay, so let's move on to FOMC. Okay, FOMC minutes. 
the lengthy minutes that I don't recommend you guys to read. So let's just go straight into that one point that um that probably moved US dollar, okay? I would say until now. Right now it's still moving. Okay. So actually, to be honest, this is not a surprise, I would say, personally. Okay. Looking ahead, most participants noted that provided that the economy were to evolve broadly as they anticipated, they judged that it could be appropriate to start reducing the pace of asset purchases this year because they saw the committee's substantial further progress criterion as satisfied with respect to the price stability goal and as close to being satisfied with respect to the maximum employment goal. Okay, as you guys know that, you know, um, there's a strong rise in inflation for the past few months already, you know, it has even rise to um, record high. Okay, so that is why they are mentioning that, you know, the substantial further progress criterion, okay, has set, is pretty much, um, has pretty much satisfied, being satisfied, okay, from the price stability goal point of view. Okay, but, um, close to being satisfied with respect to maximum employment goal. Um, yes, employment has been strong, you know, for the past few months, okay? But like I mentioned many times, we are still, okay, as of last month, I think we are still some five, close to six million jobs from the pre-pandemic level, okay? So um, still quite a distance to go, okay? But um, what they are focused on, what they are focused with, uh, Give me a moment. Okay. So um, what they want to focus on here is the progress. Okay. Although they may be still quite a distance away from um, pre-pandemic level, um, as long as the, the progress is strong enough, like AKA last month, you know, 900 over 1,000 jobs will be added. The previous month, okay, um, there was an upwards revision, okay, to 900,000 of jobs being added into the US economy, okay. These are the substantial further progress, okay, that the central bank, the Federal Reserve, will want to see, okay, before, um, you know, considering a QE tapering, okay, not necessarily, you know, jump back to pre-pandemic level, because we all know that it's not going to happen in the next three months or so, right, you know, probably like, it will probably take like six or seven months, you know, given that um, the upcoming months, um, you know, the number of jobs being added would be like 900,000 to 1 million, okay? Which is a bit ambitious, okay? So anyway, over here, okay, we can see that, you know, many of the committee members actually feel that, felt that um, a tapering, QE tapering is warranted this year, okay? Because, you know, substantial further progress has been made, okay? Now that is for most of the um, FOMC members. But however, Several others indicated, okay, that a reduction in the pace of asset purchases was more likely to become appropriate early next year, okay. Why is that a case? They saw prevailing conditions in the labor market as not being close to meeting the committee's substantial further progress standard, okay. So, you see, um, there's a bit of a, I would say, gray region over here, okay, it's because it's very much uh, subjective, okay, based on the... Um, well, actually, it depends on, it solely depends on how each member defines um, what substantial further progress is, right? So, I mean, personally, I feel like, yeah, they have been making strong progress and things like that, but, um, you know, it's still up to the individual members. So, um, as expected, some of the members, you know, are pretty more, pretty much more uh, or less, I would say, conservative, okay, when it comes to um, I would say cautious is a better term to use. Cautious when it comes to, um, you know, substantial further progress. Okay, um, but nonetheless, okay, they mentioned that appropriate early next year, early next year. Okay, so be it this year or early next year, we I would say that we can be confident to hear from the Fed in terms of carrying out a QE tapering, maybe like you know within the next six months or so, okay? Within the next six months or so. Because I mean, early next year, it can be like first quarter, unlikely second quarter, okay? So from now until like, you know, quarter one of 2022, that's like pretty much six to seven months. So all in all, I would say this minutes is quite hawkish. 
Although personally, I feel that it's not a surprise, okay? Because um, um, like, you know, recently there's been many, you know, ever since the um, meeting, the monetary policy meeting took place um, in late July. Yeah, I think it was July 30th or 31st. Um, you know, several FOMC members has been coming out talking, you know, on news interviews and things like that, newspapers and things like that, that, um, you know, they are actually hoping, um, expecting, felt that it's viable, okay, for quantitative easing tapering to be carried out this year due to the strong economic recovery that, you know, the US has been going through for the past few months, okay? So it's not much of a surprise from my point of view. However, from the market's point of view, it's actually a very hawkish, um, I would say, a hawkish statement minutes coming from the FOMC. So which is why we actually see a, um, a strong rise in um, the US dollar against the other currency, the other major currencies, okay? After the, um, the release of the minutes, okay? Now, so the... This is pretty much the last um, monetary policy meeting, okay, before the next major um, event, which is the Jackson Hole Symposium that will be carried out uh, next week, okay? So fast, 27th to 29th August will be the whole conference, okay? So um, actually, I as of right now, I don't feel like there's much more announcement that the Fed uh, can actually talk about that will cause too big of a change in market sentiment, okay? But still, I would um, hope that, you know, people will actually pay attention to the symposium next week as, um, I mean, I don't think they're going to carry out the tapering like in September, during September's meeting, but, um, you know, they are most likely going to reiterate what they have said in the uh, minutes in the most recent monetary policy meeting, okay, during the symposium, okay? Now, with that, the next meeting, the next monetary policy meeting will be held on 23rd of September, which is quite some time from now, one month from now, okay? But um, yeah, that's not the main focus right now. The main focus will be next week, Jackson Hole Symposium, okay? Um, with that, you know, if there's any new turn of events and things like that, you know, I'll keep, keep, I'll keep you guys updated. Otherwise, yeah, you guys will hear from me from, um, on the Jackson Hole Symposium probably like the following Monday after the whole conference ends, all right? So that's all I have for you guys today. Um, with that, I will hand it back to Scott. All right, thank you, Kim Hong. And great uh, segue now into the uh, US dollar index. So as we were talking, uh, it's... So the US dollar, when the FOMC minutes were coming out, uh, which would have been, uh, let's call it 11 o'clock simplicity, that's around... Uh, eight hours ago or so, or nine hours ago, uh, you can see that the reaction wasn't particularly bullish. We did have, uh, you know, a lengthy wick and, you know, price was holding up, uh, you know, around that 93.18 level, which it had tested before. And I made a video earlier in the morning uh, to the uh, LCMS Traders Club, Ecofin, and also in the Facebook group. And you can see I explained the significance of that level, but what we're seeing right now is quite unexpected and we're, we're trading at, you know, over, you know, 93.45 right now. And, you know, what is of interest when I see something like this is, you know, what is driving things? And clearly the market has got uh, a level of urgency now where the, the Fed, like Kim Hong mentioned, they have, you know, again, brought up the fact that, uh, you know, tapering is going to happen and it does seem to be sooner than expected. But there were a few mixed messages and it was a little indecisive. So this is unexpected. But my thought here would be, uh, you know, there is there is a resistance level that has been cleared. But let's, you know, wait and see. I'd like to see the Asian session play out uh, today. And then what I would be waiting for is then the US session to uh, commence. So, from a news point of view, I'll just quickly go into what we saw uh, last night. And there wasn't really, you know, anything uh, spectacular. So Wednesday, we did see uh, some housing data. We saw building permits uh, were a little bit higher than expected. Uh, housing starts were, were down, but that has been, 
link to the situation with the supply shortages as well with the there's only so much labor that's available to actually begin projects and then housing starts from a perspective um, of a total uh, amount was 1.53 down a little bit on uh, expectations so we'll go now for tonight and we've got an 8 30 gmt plus eight time initial jobless claims going to be quite interesting to see if we can come in under again. So we did actually finally see initial jobless claims the last week come in lower. And we've got the Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index and then the Philly Fed Employment. But frankly, uh, we've got a, you know, a run up here on the US dollar. So I just want to see to see how you know the, the eight o'clock pre-market session opens with the US equities tonight. And then what happens if we see a pullback? Ideally, I'd like to see a pullback um, and I'll just quickly go back to the charts to finish off here, guys. I'd like to see really a pullback um, back down to, you know, the, the 9318 level. I see this being uh, the, the market's been held down. It's almost a little bit of a overreaction and then buying opportunities back down at 9318. Right now, uncharted territory is extended. I'm going to leave it for now, guys. But those are my thoughts on the US dollar. Now we've got the yen pairs and gold in focus now, uh, and Daniel will run us through what is happening in that regard. Okay, thanks, God. Okay, so yeah, last night, uh, well, this morning to be exact, it's pretty quite interesting uh, news coming out, lot ca causing some volatility, which we we were discussing during last night's live trading sessions. Uh, in preparations for that, we'll, we'll talk about that a little while later. Now. Uh, Let's look at it. I, I went to the charts already. There's not much la uh, coming in for yen, so uh, so no no major news that will move the market for the yen uh, pairs other than the other currencies. So let's go straight to the charts. Okay, now uh, look at the US yen. Now it is really nice, you know. Um, this, this line here you, you're looking at is what we have seen in the Monday group coaching sessions, LCMS Traders Club. We were preparing for that and it has moved really very nice. Uh, part one, moving on to 109.8 level area and now moving continues up with the expectations of talking about uh, uh, tapering schedules or a uh, possibility of uh, going for tapering. And, and, that, and when did that happen, you can see the US uh, yen, US strengthen continue to move up so that's something uh, really nice now what will we be looking out for right now i probably will be looking for still a continuation of the us uh, dollar strength um, however you know you can see what do i see now i do see my resistance coming up so you can see even if i take a trade right now you're only having about 40 pips of take profit target okay so what i, I i'm looking at right now is if it does break you know above something like uh, if it continues or strength because there is also a possibility that after last night's news, uh, this morning's news, sorry, <laughs> this morning's news coming in, strengthening of the US dollar, there could be some profit taking coming back down, uh, coming back down here before it continues up. So I'm looking at maybe about 110.3, you know, 110.3 or 11, if those are a bit more aggressive, uh, try what to do at 110. Point, I would say 25 right now and then you can look for a, a very short term trade if anything you will take right now go for a short term trade you know breaking down I would say go for a 20 pip stop loss and you look for a buy of about 40 pips that I think profit target somewhere here right towards the resistance uh, zone somewhat uh, but if those who are conservative I would advise you because it's coming so close to the resistance you may want to not take this trade uh, at all Okay, so looking at it, I'm looking at the possible uh, US dollar continue to strengthen compared to the yen. Now, if you look at the euro yen, it has been quite muted, right? Since uh, this week, very muted uh, uh, coming in. And what, what do we see uh, uh, from there? We do see that actually uh, it is right now at a support zone waiting for breakout. We are still waiting for a breakout below 128.2 for the reason that the Eurozone is still not doing for, or so well. Uh, and, but however, COVID-19 is impacting the whole world again. And uh, they seems to be re retreating away from yen uh, pairs uh, in terms of safe haven currencies. Uh, I think especially right now, there's a possibility of looking at uh, a strengthening of the US dollar uh, 
moving is as well so i'll be still be waiting overall fundamental fundamentally waiting for it to uh, break below 128.2 uh same thing 128.2 i'll go for a quick maybe 40 pip stop loss and i'll go for 80 pip stake profit target and that's where i was target why because i have a support level at 126.975 uh, so again you know i will be looking for a sell euro yen 40 pips uh, stop loss uh, for a quick uh, 80 to 90 pips of take profit target in terms of euro uh, yen okay and last of all when we look at pound yen now pound yen <laughs> follows real nice um and this week it, it drops below the drops below the the symmetrical, symmetrical triangle or pendant though they call it and it breaks down uh, then we're saying that uh, looking at it most likely i think it was yes just yesterday we look at it most likely it will retrace back up to the resistance zone okay and then uh, there is will be a chance of a continuation of a downward trend to the yen although we do see a, a weakening of yen a lot of people are profit taking due to uh, a, a safe haven currencies coming in profit taking however alternatively right now the whole euro if the eurozone is not doing too well you know uk is opening up it's, it's done down pretty well uh, however it doesn't show uh, too much of uh, uh, robustness because covid19 is still impacting uh, the uk economy uh, pretty drastically and there could be a possibility uh, of that uh, you know traders going into saving currencies compared to the yen they could uh, compared to the pound pound yen the yen could start somewhat strengthen uh, as well and i'll be still be looking downwards so i'll say you know wait for it to retrace back down below 150.8 150.8 and in this case you know i'll say probably 50 pips stop, uh, stop stop loss and then you go for 120 pips of take profit uh target you know one is to two risk to ratio this is a possible uh, trade idea that we'll be looking at uh right now for pound yen okay so today is thursday so we're talking about gold as well now you can see gold has dropped past down due to the uh, fomc meeting minutes i mean give home and scott has already talked about it a lot uh we could we possibly be looking at a possible us strengthening and very interestingly now that you can see actually let me zoom it in for you okay so it actually went up to this zone here this is an intermediate zone right now around 17 uh 1792 uh, level you can see previous previously it has been rejected before so i highlight the zone and you reject that that area as well coming back down with the news of a, a possibility of a us dollar strengthening um you know people may not go need to go to the safe haven uh, assets like gold they could possibly a short term wise i think it's going to move downwards towards a support zone of a 1761 uh coming in but i will never discredit gold uh coming in then we will look for it could be a possibility of a also uh, coming in a buying opportunity at 1767 uh, area coming back up moving towards again uh, to this area here of 1792 okay so this is why i think a, a movement of the movement of the gold uh, could be happening uh, this week and on coming to next week till thursday okay so i'll catch you again tomorrow scott all right thank you for that daniel and um, for the people that are new here, uh, welcome. And if you're wondering uh, what we what we do behind the scenes, other than the currency call that we do Monday to Friday, we do have a private forum called LCMS Traders Club as well, and it, as, as well as providing uh, you know live trading ideas, signal analysis, and you know anything really trading related into the forex markets. We also do a live trading call. So Monday is more of a preview on what is coming up and what to look out for. And then uh, last night, uh, Daniel at 9 p.m. GMT plus eight time zone goes through uh, a live trading call where if there are setups, uh, trades will be taken. So Dan, if you want to go into a little bit of detail about how that went and then uh, what the, the Traders Club is all about as well. Hey, sure. Um, okay, I'm back. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so yesterday is a group coaching uh, live sessions where you have live trading sessions, usually you know, Wednesdays, 9 p.m. U.S. market open. We will guide through what current market conditions. They'll show you, uh, I show you, and we have a good discussions on how to prepare for the, the U.S. market opening, let the market move, and then we have what kind of tra trading we can trade together. Now, unfortunately, last night, everybody was waiting for the FOMC, so the market was a bit muted, but yet doesn't mean that we cannot 
identify uh, trade potentials uh, coming in and that's what we did. You know, there are a lot of discussions coming in, but perhaps, you know, I won't share everything, but I'll share two uh, trade ideas that we were looking at last night. Okay, so let's go back to the charts. The first one we were looking at was Aussie USD and New Zealand USD. And you really very nice New Zealand USD. We we're looking at if FOMC statements a bit hawkish, that what Akipo has mentioned, you know, it was a bit hawkish. We were waiting for it to break below 0 0.6867, uh, coming back down, and then could move all the way uh, uh, down to 0 0.6780. And I hope uh, uh, we were looking at have this set up a uh, trade. But of course, most importantly, it has to be after. After the FOMC uh, meeting minutes because we want to see that the tapering or at least some hawkish statements uh, comes out. We were looking at like 30 pips or 40 pips of stop loss coming in for almost 80 pips of a take profit target uh, coming in. You know, so this was one of the trade ideas that we look at, even though the market last night you can see is not really moving uh, uh, too much here uh, as well, right? So we, that's what something we do. And the other one was that we were actually having discussion and preparing for FOMC for those who are interested to trade the FOMC statements. And you can see that last night, it was really very really nice consolidation. Uh, you can see in the consolidation, the rectangle pattern coming in. And we were saying that, okay, but we, we think most likely it's a hawkish, uh, it could be a hawkish statement, it has to break. And close strongly below 1.17 after the news coming in hockey statements if it does that we will be looking for a sell trade and this is what happened in the morning uh, and this sell trade is going to go all the way down right now you see breaking down all the way about right now moving about 30 over pips right then we were looking at a possible like 30 pips stop loss for a 60 pips i think profit for those who are taking the trade you know again a possibility that 30 pips for the early in the morning if singapore gmt uh, gmt plus eight you know if you take the trade 30 pips for the when you wake up in the morning looking at profit it also sounds uh, great uh, right then so th we were looking at these kind of trades coming in so it was very beneficial to all a lot of uh, people was happy a lot of members were happy that we were actually prepared the trades for the FOMC statements and know what to do even though um, there was a, a quite a muted response last night so really uh, sometimes no trade is also a winner okay so right now for, for those who have uh, already joined the club members remember you know to continue to coin join us on monday group for our group trading sessions and on wednesday are live trading sessions there then okay so for those who have not joined us before you know what how you could you could you could do sorry is come into lcms traders club join us Right, join us. Just go to this club, tradersclub.lcms.com.sg. You can see the link right here. Just go ahead and, and join. Okay, click on it. And what you can see here is uh, it's a web page for you to join us at only $49 a month. Right, this is not only we do the group coaching sessions, live trading sessions, we also have everything for the Forex traders. Like, for example, uh, we have the trading floor right here. We have a, we a webinars. We have uh, lots of uh, um, um, trade ideas, signals coming in, analyzing of the signals coming in. Uh, in fact, also a community of traders uh, coming, joining together, have lots of discussions to just do trading alone. So all you need to do is for $49 a month, click on this button. It's revert this is without a doubt the least you you should do to achieve your best in trading so this price can change anytime so just sign up click on it and get on board now and i see you in the club all right thank you there daniel and so yeah feel free guys the links are there in the chat as well so check it out you know well worth doing a lot of helpful resources but thank you for watching everyone and thanks to the fellow coaches we'll see you tomorrow guys for CAD pairs and cryptocurrency. Have a great day, everyone.